According to Joseph Conrad, a great Polish-British writer, the belief in a supernatural source of evil is not necessary. Men alone are quite capable of every wickedness. If there are any of you who doubt this, just ask the people of Plainfield, Wisconsin. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here. Today I'm checking out a town, a small town that would otherwise be forgotten except it has a bit of a dark past. Now I know some of you already know what that story is. I'll get into that later in the video. But first, what I really want to do is introduce you to this small town so you can see for yourself what Plainfield is all about. Yes, that's right. We're here in Plainfield, Wisconsin. I've had several requests over, oh, I don't know, the last few months of people asking if we could come out to Plainfield and show them around. So here we are today. Located 98 miles southwest of Green Bay, Plainfield is a small village of roughly 930 people. And though you wouldn't know it by looking at it, Plainfield attracts a fair number of visitors, many of whom travel here for the darker history associated with the town. Now for those of you who don't know, Plainfield was first settled by an out-of-stater, a New Yorker by the name of William N. Kelly. And that was back in October of 1848. He was actually the first person to erect a home in section 24 of all places. Not too long after that, in 1849, a Vermont native by the name of Elijah C. Waterman arrived here. He laid out the town site, made a claim, and then offered free lots to anybody who would come settle and build upon them. Originally known as Norwich, when the post office was established, the town's name was changed to honor the town where Elijah Waterman had previously lived, which was Plainfield, Vermont. In 1855, the first general store was built by a man with the name of W. Beach, just like my favorite place to go on a hot summer's day. And by 1869, 11 businesses were in place, including three general stores, two blacksmith shop, one tailor shop, and a grist mill. In addition to the grist mill, a sawmill was also reportedly built around the same time, though according to one source, it burned down shortly after and then had to be rebuilt. By 1875, the railroad arrived and life in Plainfield was well on its way. So much so that when 1882 rolled around, Plainfield became officially incorporated. As you can see, I'm standing on one of the more well-known streets here in Plainfield. In addition to having several old historic buildings, it also has this building here, which used to be the site of the hardware store that so many people associate with the story of Ed Gein. And while the building is no longer being used as the local hardware store, if you look closely, you can see the remains of what used to be the Hardware Hank sign. To those who don't know the tales associated with the town, this former hardware store looks like any other old relic fighting the passages of time. Yet this particular building holds a secret, a dark secret, one that plays a major role in the story we'll share later on. Just beyond the former hardware store sits a building right over there that contains the village offices. And then beyond that, my personal favorite, the public library. Unfortunately, as luck would have it, the library is closed today, which means we won't be able to get the lowdown on some of the more hidden history associated with the buildings in this town. 
but I did talk to one of the locals and discovered that the old Opera House building you see in front of us is one of the oldest buildings still standing here in town. It was used as a theater at some point and one of the locals who grew up here who doesn't live in town anymore bought the building and has plans to restore it. Built originally as an opera house and performance venue in 1902, the building has been home to several other venues over the years, including a dance hall, a church, and a bar. Though restoration was planned to be complete in 2023, it appears much work still needs to be done. And then beyond the vacant lot here is this other really old historic building here in town that now houses the walker room and a coffee shop by the name of Starks and Lewis, which interestingly enough may have also been the original name of this building back so many years ago, as the person I talked to believed that this was once a department store by the name of Starks and Luce. Now obviously you'll have to take that with a bit of a grain of salt because I wasn't able to confirm that because the library is closed today. But if one of the locals says it, well, it's probably more likely true than not. According to one source, the building was erected by L. Starks in the late 1800s and then occupied by F.J. Luce, who ran a general merchandise store. Photos depicting the downtown in later years show the building was occupied by a Gambles at one point. In any case, you can tell from its architectural style that it is one of the oldest buildings here in town that overlooks the main street. As alluded to in the beginning of the video and kinda mentioned briefly by stating the name Ed Gein, Plainfield is known for having a dark past, a dark secret, a skeleton in the closet, if you will. And I will get to that. First, however, I want to share with you one of Plainfield's best kept secrets. One that I think everybody wants to know about. At least if you prefer the more wholesome type secrets that you can eat. Unsure of what I'm talking about? Let's head over there. We got to make our way across the street, past the old hardware store, and across the main thoroughfare through town to this little stand. One thing outsiders to Plainfield may not know is that they have a wonderful fresh fruit and vegetable stand that operates right here on this corner all summer long. All the fruits and vegetables sold here are grown locally on the Flight Family Farm located outside of Coloma, Wisconsin, which is about a half hour's drive from here. One of Plainfield's best kept secrets, you can get things like blueberries, cherries, watermelon, tomatoes, and of course, everybody's favorite, sweet corn. And then directly across the street from the Flight Family Farm fruit and vegetable stand, you have the building of the Union Telephone Company here in Plainfield. A local staple since 1900, the Union Telephone Company has been serving the needs of the Plainfield community and surrounding areas for 123 years. Continuing down Main Street, just past the Union Telephone Company building, you have two buildings where the names are written in Spanish, the Iglesia de Dios and Mi Tiendita Tienda Mexicana, translated Mexican store, which leads me to believe that in this small town of Plainfield that there is a higher population of people who speak Spanish because it's unusual for a small town here in Wisconsin to have stores or businesses like I believe the Iglesia de Dios, I believe that's a church. As I'm saying, it's unusual for you to find that in a small town here in Wisconsin unless there's a need for it, which obviously if they have that here, there's a need. 
Then you have the old standbys of your U.S. Post Office, the R Bar and Grill Food and Drink Entertainment Establishment, and right next door to that, you'll find Isaiah 58, which is another church. Quick question for you all sightseers. How do you know when you're in a Wisconsin town? Give up. It's when you see a church next to a bar that you know you're in Wisconsin. I know, couldn't resist, but if you're from Wisconsin, you totally know what I'm talking about. Moving on. One thing I noticed walking down the main street is this cute little park across the way. Why don't we go check it out? See what it's all about. I see they have a sign that says, Plainfield is a be kind community. I have to say that seems to be the case here in Plainfield. Everybody I talked to was very kind, treated me like I was one of them, even though I'm a total stranger. Oh look, check out this cute little oasis here in the downtown. Somebody went to a lot of trouble to plant all these flowers here to take care of this garden. Looks like a really nice little spot to just sit and hang out. Definitely not the place that you would think would have a really dark secret in its past. But don't be fooled, they do. But before we get into that, I have a couple of quick shout outs to give. First, special thanks goes out to Bob from New Mexico and Lynn and Steve from Washington for tipping our trip job. And last but not least, special thanks goes out to Gary M for becoming our latest patron and Steve and Lynn for upping their patronage on Patreon. Thanks to all of you for helping us get out to these interesting and awesome places across Wisconsin and in America. Now, back to Plainfield and its dark secret most locals wish would be forgotten to history. Now, I started the video out showing you the happy, positive side of Plainfield, the one that the locals are proud of today. But because there is so much interest in the dark secrets we all have, that I thought I would pull back the curtain just a little bit and dig into the story Plainfield's wishing could be forgotten in the past involving the infamous Ed Yeen. But, in order to do so, we ought to start at the beginning. Like any good story, you start at the beginning. And that involves a trip out to the former Ed Gein homestead. One of America's notorious criminals, Ed Gein lived alone in a large farmhouse a few miles outside of Plainfield. Born in 1906 to George and Augusta, Ed's family moved from La Crosse to this location when Ed was a young boy. Presenting what's left of the Ed Gein homestead. Or at least what I believe used to be the Ed Gein homestead. It's not like they give you the address and directions directly to it. I am fairly confident, however, that this was the location. I did research on this years ago, and if any of this looks familiar to you sightseers, that's because I had done at one time a video specifically on Ed Gein. However, you won't find that video on YouTube anymore. I took it down because <laughs> YouTube had flagged it not suitable for those under the age of 18, and I really just didn't want that black mark on my channel. Thus, it's in the archives. As you can see, the home that Ed Gein once lived in no longer exists today. It burned down many years ago 
right shortly after Ed Gein was arrested, the house had mysteriously burned down. And interestingly enough, the sheriff happened to be the son of one of the women whose life had been lost to Ed's handiwork. The woman's name? Bernice Worden, proprietor of the hardware store in town. According to police, Ed went into her store on November 16, 1957, to buy antifreeze. Afterwards, he took Bernice's life using one of the store's displayed 22 caliber rifles. A well-known figure in the community, it didn't take long for police to discover she was missing. While looking around the store, reportedly Bernice's son, Deputy Sheriff Frank Worden, discovered a written receipt for the antifreeze she sold Ed. Believed to be an important clue, police used it as a reason to visit the Gein farmstead. It was there police found Bernice's remains in a shed. Given the horrors that were discovered by the police upon finding Bernice, many people in the community believed there was no reason to investigate when that old farmhouse burned to the ground. Hence, no formal investigation was ever conducted, and Ed even, when he was told of the news, said in so many words, it's just as well. Upon Ed's arrest, he confessed to visiting local cemeteries during the night, where he dug up individuals who had been recently interred. Police, not really believing his story, had two caskets exhumed from the Plainfield Cemetery. Finding them empty, they decided then that Ed was indeed telling the truth. We're entering Spiritland Cemetery. This is one of the cemeteries where Ed supposedly had desecrated some of the graves with his activities, his nocturnal activities. You can see it's just this little cemetery, this little country cemetery, basically out in the middle of nowhere. Which is probably why, if Ed did come here, why he came here. Because of course, under the cover of darkness, you would likely escape detection. After being arrested, Ed was sent to Wapan, where he spent the next 10 years in the Wisconsin Central State Hospital for the criminally insane. In early 1968, he was found competent enough to stand trial and subsequently convicted. Due to his mental state, Ed was sentenced to life in a psychiatric hospital. Eventually, he wound up at the Mendota Mental Health Institute, where he died of cancer at the age of 78. Aside from all that dark history, this is a really neat old cemetery as a lot of the graves date back into the 1800s. For example, you can see here that the mother, Sarah, died in 1889 and the father, Archibald, died in 1867. Of course, there are other graves that date back to that time period as well. Just we're not going to tarry here too long. It is starting to get to that time of evening where you know, the sun's going down and technically I don't think you're allowed to be in cemeteries after dark here in our state.